You can now measure time to first paint and time to first contentful paint with the Paint Timings API. You can control how fonts are rendered with the CSS font display property and WebAssembly has landed. From the National Museum of Mathematics in Manhattan on a tricycle with square wheels, I'm Pete LePage. Let's dive in and see what's new for developers in Chrome 60. When a user navigates to a page, they're looking for some visual feedback to reassure them that everything is working. With the new Paint Timing API, we can now measure that. The API exposes two metrics, time to first paint, which marks the point at which the browser starts to render something, anything, the first bit of content on screen, and time to first contentful paint, which marks the point when the browser renders the first bit of content from the DOM, text, an image, something like that. Check out Phil Walton's post on updates to learn how you can track these metrics and use them to improve your experience. Web fonts give you the ability to incorporate rich typography, but if the user doesn't already have the typeface, it needs to be downloaded, potentially making your site appear slow. Thankfully, most browsers will use a fallback if the font takes too long to download. The new font display property allows you to control how a downloadable font renders before it's fully loaded. Auto uses whatever font display strategy the user agent uses. Block gives the font face a short block period and an infinite swap period. Swap gives the font face a zero second block period and an infinite swap period. Fallback gives the font face an extremely small block period and a short swap period. And finally, optional gives the font face an extremely small block period and a zero second swap period. It's supported in Chrome 60 and Opera and is in development for Firefox. Check out Rob Dodson's post on updates for full details. WebAssembly, or WASM, provides a new way to run code written in languages like C and C++ on the web at near native speeds. It provides the speed necessary to build an in-browser video editor or run Unity games at high frame rates, utilizing existing standards-based web platform APIs. Check out Alex Danilo's Google I.O. talk and find more info at webassembly.org, including demos, docs, and how to get started. These are just a few of the changes in Chrome 60 for developers, but of course, there's plenty more. The Payment Request API is now supported on desktop versions of Chrome. The new Web Budget API enables a site with the Web Push Notification permission to send a limited number of push messages that trigger background work, such as syncing data or dismissing notifications, without the need to show a user visible notification. And push subscription expiration time is now available, notifying sites when and if a subscription will expire. Check the description for more details, including links to docs and specs. Also, check out Case's new video about all the new features in Chrome 60 in the Chrome DevTools. Then click the subscribe button and you'll get an email whenever a new video is launched on our channel. I'm Pete LePage and as soon as Chrome 61 is released, I'll be right here to tell you what's new in Chrome. <laughs>